Well, hello everyone. Good to see you again. It's that time. It's that time. It's what the fuck Tuesday. Did we get into the relationship advice questions that have been sent in over the last week or so? And uh, I read them on the air, on the show out loud. And then you, of course, are welcome to put your comments into the chat room. <coughs> Excuse me. I will answer aloud and share my thoughts on it and uh, on what these people have going on. I uh, hope you guys uh, have been spreading the link uh, around for the Dusty video. I got a lot of comments from people who were like, you know, I wish somebody had told me this before. I just, I never knew this. Every man I've dated has been a Dusty. Every man I know in my family and everything is a Dusty. And so it's like, it's, 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 it's making women become aware of what to look for. And the ladies who contributed to that video did such an excellent job of defining what a Dusty is and quoting some of the, the weird old things that they have to say and as well as setting out their ideas uh, for what a good man is, a guy who would be someone that a woman would be proud to call her own. So uh, if you have not seen that video yet, please check it out. It's, uh, it's, it's you won't, you can't miss it. It's got a, a guy in the front with a, a ventilator mask on because he's trying to avoid breathing in all the dust. And that's what we were talking about. So let us get into uh, today's show. Let me see. I don't know how many videos, I mean that videos, how many letters I have. I think it's, I don't know, 13 or 14. We'll see. Um, so let's get started because we got a lot of ground to cover. This question number one. Oh, you think it was the best one I've ever made? Wow, that's saying a lot. I guess, you know, the more I do this, the better I get at it. Um, female, age 26 to 35. She's in that group somewhere. Hi, Deb. I love your advice and your style of delivering it. I'm 29. Okay, there we go. I'm 29. I live with my parents and older brothers who are 38 and 37. I am writing about an issue with my mother who I feel doesn't respect me as an adult. She makes plans with my time saying that it's a, quote, surprise treat, but she never asks me. It's always something that costs money, so I can't just not go. Then when I'm there, I always end up paying for something for her. The worst part is that nine times out of ten is something I hate, so I can't even say I had a decent time. I've had conversations with her at least every other month about asking me before making plans for my time, and she gets very defensive. It always turns into either I should like surprises and be happy she's doing something nice, which is funny because I end up paying for most of it, or that I'm an awful daughter who doesn't want to spend time with her mother. But this latest incident was too inconsiderate and self-centered for me to ignore. I'm going abroad for Christmas, and I have been excited about it since January of this year. My mother tells me two weeks ago that she bought tickets for a gospel show in another state less than a week before I leave. This angers me because I've said on at least seven different occasions how much I hated that show the last time I went. She claims not to remember. I always use the weekend before trip to pack and get last minute things so I don't have to be stressed after work. Also, she has booked a motel, and despite this supposedly being my Christmas gift, she wants me to pay for it. I was extremely upset and confronted her about how inconsiderate to my time and feelings it was to book this before my trip, but it turned into me not liking surprises and wanting to ruin everything. She rarely bothers my brothers with this, but they either refuse to speak to her unless absolutely necessary or are so disrespectful and mean to her. I really don't want to do either because I love my mom and I do like spending time with her. Please help. I want to resolve this without being rude. Oh, my. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Why are you guys in your 30s still living at the house with your mama? Okay, that just makes no sense to me. Move out. And then she can't book your time because she won't know where you are. But in this particular instance, um, what you're doing is you worrying about her feelings to the detriment of your own. You worrying about being nice and you worried about what she thinks and you worried about all the stuff that don't have nothing to do with you. 
So when she's involving your resources, she's involving your time. So your money is going into the stuff that you didn't choose, don't want to do, and can't stand to do. Okay, so what you need to do is uh, sit down with your mama and uh, talk about this. You know, I mean, it, it is very curious, like, the three of you are there. I mean, why are you guys all living together? I mean, is she, like, incapacitated in some way? Are you guys, like, you know, helping support her because she doesn't have any Social Security or something? I mean, what's going on? This, that was the first question in my mind. It's like, what? how is this arrangement working out since you got dudes almost 40 years old to live at their house with their mama? That's something don't sound right about that unless she's, you know, they're, you're, all you guys together are supporting her and taking care of her, but you did not mention any of that. So I'm kind of in the dark on that point there. But let's just say that you are and just say that you, you know, you're contributing to the household financially. You paying some bills there. You buying some food there. Your brothers are doing the same. So let's just put that as that's a given. So what you need to do is sit down with your mother and say, Mother, um, as of today, when you plan these little things like this, I will not be participating. Now, see, you're going to see that as being mean. It's, it's not being mean. It's putting up boundaries because you see that you running your mouth all these years has not worked, right? It ain't done shit. She's like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then she does what she wants to do. So you, you, you keep talking, but talking's not doing anything. You're not taking any action. All you're doing is complaining. So what you have to do is say, so this thing that you plan, I will not be going to that. You need to find somebody else to go with you. And then, you know, find get to your sons to pay for the hotel or something. And then, uh, you know, because I'm going on a trip and I need that time for what I'm trying to do. And I'm not going to be going to another state to see a gospel show that I already told you that I hate it. I saw it with you the first time. That was enough. I'm not going to go and see another show again and again that I already told you that I hate. So, you know, you, you're like asking for permission for her. You don't ask permission. You tell her, I'm not going. I'm not paying for this. I'm not paying for that. And when, we want, we, when, when we're going to spend time together, which we will, it will be something that we both decide that we like, and it's going to be mutually enjoyable. Right now, everything is one-sided. It's all about you, and I'm not feeling that at all. And I'm not going to be doing that anymore. So if you plan something, and you think it's a surprise, and I tell you I don't like it, then it, the surprise will be on you, Mom, that you're going to be going there by yourself or you with your friends. Another thing I considered is that, you know, sometimes seniors, um, because, you know, you didn't mention your dad, so we're going to see he's, he's deceased or whatever. Um, sometimes they're just lonely. You know, they're lonely, and they don't know how to communicate that they're lonely. So what you need to do is do some homework, you know, when you get back from your trip, and look into some senior centers that have activities that she could do. Like they have, like, I don't know, around here they do arts and crafts. They have dance classes, you know, like square dancing stuff. They even had a senior's hip-hop dancing class. I wanted to see that shit, but I, I couldn't go because it was the middle of the day. And... uh they have, you know, they can do swimming lessons and work out in gyms. And, I mean, in all those things, they meet other little old ladies and little old men. And they have, you know, some, something to do with their time. And uh, they go on trips. Like, over here, we got Reno. I don't know where you, where did you say you live? Oh, you didn't say. But, you know, on the East Coast, they got Atlantic City. And, you know, they got, we got Reno. And we got Vegas. And we got Lake Tahoe. So, I mean, they have all that. Plus, we got Indian cas bink casinos all over the state. And, you know, so they plan trips to places like that. They go on a bus and everybody go. They go out to lunch. They go out to dinner. They go to see shows and plays and all kind of stuff as a group. So you need to get her hooked up with some people like that so she can stop bugging the fuck out of you. And that's what, you know, you got to do. So you can't, um, you know, don't worry about it being nice and stuff. Of course, you love your mother. But that doesn't mean that you have to become a, a, a like a, a rug for her to walk on and just do what she wants to do in order to prove that you're, you're a good daughter. That makes no sense. So, um, yeah, she needs to get some. She needs some friends. She needs somebody to hang with. And then, you know, try to figure out something that you do like. And then, you know, set some time aside to do that with her. And I think that would make her very happy. And then she'll stop with these surprises, which I think are just her way of trying to communicate that she wants to spend time with you and that she's lonely. All right, so let's move on to question number two. This young lady is 25, 
and she lives in London. Hmm. She says, I'm starting to notice a pattern in my relationship. We are still getting to know each other after months of dating, but I would describe our relationship as stable. My boyfriend is 30, and he's pretty busy, but he doesn't handle stress well. When he's stressed or upset about something, these are the times when he is not kind to me. I can be pretty sensitive. See, there she goes, trying to downplay um, oops, herself instead of focusing on, you know, how he's treating her. So she said, I'm trying to understand how to handle these situations or if it's a bigger problem than I think it is. So yesterday we had plans, and when I met up with him, we were there together for about an hour at dinner. He told me he had a lot to do and just wanted to stay home the rest of the night instead of hanging out. I was upset that I'd come over to his place expecting to stay. It was now being sent away, but I understood he had things to do. We ended up agreeing to still hang out, and I offered to help him get some of his chores done. We ended up staying up pretty late because we were having fun, having drinks and singing karaoke. Okay. All right. Today he had to work and was really tired. This evening I asked him how his day went and he said it was awful because he was too tired and had to go home early without finishing his work and now his work schedule for the week is thrown off. I understand he's frustrated but I feel like he's blaming me because I pushed him to hang out last night. I tried to call him after his text this evening to see how he's doing and he hung up on my call and immediately after texting saying, I don't want to talk, I'm going to bed. I feel like this is unfair because last night I told him that it was getting late and we should go to bed and still we stayed up later. It's not really all my fault. Now I'm upset that he hung up and is being short with me as I don't feel like I deserve this. He could have picked up the phone to say I'm going to bed and have a good night. Am I right to be upset about this? I didn't reply to him because I'm angry and I feel like he'll come around when he calms down. But now I'm waiting for an apology and I don't know if he will say he's sorry. I'm just looking for an outside opinion. Thanks in advance. All right. First of all, young lady, you say the man is busy and you say he doesn't handle stress well. Okay, you understand this about the man that you claim to love. And yet, when he told you he had something to do, you got upset about it and you you know felt like you were getting, being quote sent away that's a very childish thing to do if you know like you just wrote the man is very busy and he doesn't handle stress well I mean you said that in the first paragraph so how does this suddenly turn to be about you now what you could have done was told him okay you know I might I understand that but in the future when you have a busy thing like that let me know so I cannot be expecting to spend the evening with you and get disappointed so you know I'm going to leave cuz I know what you got to do is important and we'll see each other later in the week and then you get up and you take your little narrow ass home that's what you do that's what you didn't do instead you're like oh well you know I'm upset so you made it all about you and it's like in a relationship when someone is telling you they have something that important to do and like you said you know he doesn't handle stress well there should have been no conversation about how you felt about being you know being pushed away that's very childish response by the way and you know agreeing to hang out and all this stuff you should have left you should have gone that was your responsibility to do that so where he messed up was trying to please you because he didn't want you to be mad. So then he sacrificed what he needed to do. So then he fucked up at work the next day. And of course, he's blaming you because he told you he had something to do. Now, of course, it was his fault because he should have been man enough to say, look, you know, this was fun, but we got to cut this off early now. You know, you got to go kind of thing. But he didn't do that. So both of you are wrong. But in my opinion, um, you were the one that got this ball rolling because all you had to do was, was do what I told you. Say, you know, I, I need to know next time, so be a better communicator. Kiss him and then fucking get up and leave. That's all you had to do. And it's like, you know, I feel like I, I'm being pushed away. That's something like a three-year-old would say. So, you know, I, if that's the pattern, you know, he, you know, recognize that he's this way and yet you kind of push his buttons anyway. This relationship is not going to last too long. He's going to get sick of you. Evidently, his work is very important to him and it seems like it's pretty demanding. And you're aware of that because that's what you said in the very first paragraph of your letter. And yet you totally ignored it and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed to stay there anyway and stay up and sing and then say, well, we should be going to bed. Then why didn't you go to bed? He would have followed you. How hard is that? So I don't know. I'm just I'm seeing a lot of immaturity here for you to be 25 years old. You act like a teenager. This is stupid. You know, 
she really she really should have got her ass in her car and left i'm not gonna knowing how men like to blame women for everything she put herself in that situation you know she put herself in that situation by pressing the issue if he says he got something to do you're supposed to be like deuces because anything that happens because of him not going to bed and all this stuff you don't want him to be looking at you for to blame you for any of it okay see that's what i mean it's like the preemptive strike he can date everybody's busy they can date this shit is busy my ass is i date that doesn't mean anything it's like what when i when i don't have time then you don't see me if i have time if i make time for you then you'll see me but it's like you know just because that doesn't mean you're going to be seeing the person every day you're just dating and she makes it sound like they just you know just really getting everything off the ground good so she they shouldn't be spending that much time together anyway all right question number three this is a lady in her 40s usa i was speaking to a male friend and prior to his current marriage he has a child that's 14 that was being raised by the mother's mother Okay, so that's the maternal grandmother. Well, the grandmother passed away recently and his daughter had to... Oh, thank you, Anwi. And his daughter had to go and reside back with the mama. Well, the mama contacts the father, stating that she'll drop child support if he takes the child. Of course she will. You don't have custody. You don't get child support, bitch. Dumb. Well, his wife says that she doesn't want the child in her house. I'm looking at my friend now sideways because I'm waiting on his fatherly instincts to kick in. Well, brother man goes on further to tell me that he kind of doesn't want her there either because she's a bad kid. I'm like, what the fuck? He and his current wife have two children and are living well. But wait a minute. Am I wrong to be in my feelings because he doesn't want to be the father to his daughter that he even allows his wife to say my house? It's too much. She's still a child. You're the adult. And obviously the mother still isn't trying to be a mother or a responsible parent. Any suggestion for my frazzled, opinionated mind? Well, yes. Since you can see that she got two donkeys for parents and you're so concerned about the little child, go down to the foster care agency and you get the girl. Now, I know that sounds cold, but this is how this is the reality of the world. You are not related to these people. You don't have nothing to do with it. This man is a fucking chicken head. And it's like you, that's your flesh and blood. And if anything, what the mother could do, especially if she has any kind of history of, you know, drug use or anything like that, she could go to court and he will have to take his daughter. Either that or he will have to sign away his parental rights and she will become a ward of the court and be, end up in foster care. So, you know. It's going to push both of them's hand. But to see two people that don't want their own child, this is just criminal. This is some really sick shit. This is why I say dumb bitches should get a fucking abortion. You know, everybody talking about, oh, a baby is a blessing. You know, you got to make a way. As then they dump the kid on their mother, right? And then these mamas, you know, are the ones using the ones encouraging this bullshit. So then the kids they dump the kids on you, then the bitch dies. Now what? Okay, so she done wore her out with raising a teenager at her age in her 70s or 80s or something. She shouldn't have been messing with no teenagers at that age. So the little girl, the lady, the lady croaked. And so now it's like the kid is in limbo. She, nobody wants her. But that's my solution. Yes, I said thank you to her. I um. This this is a sad and sorry father. And what he's supposed to do is tell his new wife, this is my flesh and blood. She's as important to me as them other two are. So she, we're going to figure this out, and she's going to come here and live, and you're just going to deal with it because you knew I had a child when you got with me. So it's not a fucking surprise that this, is, this could have happened. Now her mama can't handle her. Her mama don't want her, and so she's going to come here. If that's something that you don't want, then take your shit and get the fuck out. That would be me. You know, get out. Get the fuck out. And take them two nappy-headed rugrats with you when you go. And don't ask me for shit either. Because you don't want my daughter here, then I don't want yours here either. Get everybody get the fuck out. But, you know, I'm just an asshole. So, But, I mean, that would be, the, my, would be my approach for real. Because I would be so fucking irritated at her. You know, I, she can't come up in my house. Bitch, this ain't your house. I, my name is on this shit. Half this shit up in here is mine too. And when I walk into my half of the living room, she can be there. 
She could be on my half of the kitchen. She could be on my half of the stairs. She could be on my half of the, anything up in this bitch because it's half mine. And you don't dictate what goes on up in here. Ooh, but these dudes, you know. Well, yeah, but see, he's denying his own child. I mean, he's like, the, he let the wife say what she said and didn't correct her. And then he's telling his friend that he's kind of feels the same way. So between the two of them, they don't really want him. What I'm saying is that he's a punk ass bitch man. And for that to be a quote friend of yours, you need better friends. But this is why, you know, I say when you get with a man who's got, you know, who's a baby daddy, this is what could happen. This is what you have to be prepared for. At any time, whoever's the caretaker of the child, it could be the mother, the grandmother, you know, an aunt, whoever is caretaking for that child could die. And then that child, that daddy's the next of kin. The child is going to come and live with him. And what are you going to do? See, you need to be that. You need to be prepared for that because that's that's the way that it happens. And his name's on that birth certificate, so he is legally responsible for that little girl. The mother could drop out, drive over there, drop the little girl off, and it won't be shit he could do about it because he's her daddy. He'll just have to open the door and deal with it. And he better get ready because that might be what happens. Question number four. I've been with my boyfriend for one year. He's very attractive, but very shy. He's 28. I'm his first girlfriend because he never built up courage to ask anyone out. Oh, God, one of them wimpy dudes. It took me six months to finally get him to agree to be in a relationship with me because he warned me that he would be a bad boyfriend and he'd rather be single. I should have listened. Uh-oh. Wait, I need a swig. I saw it, lady boss. I told her. And my software updated now so it's like this big orange box <laughs> pops on the screen but it's good to still remind me because just in case i'm reading like down here like this and i don't see it but i did see that one um she writes i'm a chubby girl and he's an athletic sexy man oh really huh. we make an odd couple i presume but i love him and he tells me every day that he loves me but then we got into a conversation about types. And he said that his type is a very skinny girl with small boobs. What? That's completely opposite of me. I'm a chubby girl with large boobs that are fabulous. Good for her. But he's just not into boobs. He said he likes them small and perky on a tiny frame. Oh, he's a pedophile. I broke down crying because I just felt like the ugliest girl in the world. I felt like a huge monster. I slept for two days straight afterwards. I honestly believe... I was hit with sudden depression. He told me that he doesn't particularly like my body. What the fuck? And that my ex-boyfriend who loved my body was lying to me and that he would just sleep with anything that moves. I told him that my ex worshipped my body. His response was, yeah, because he's a freak. He went on to tell me that no guy likes fat girls. They're just desperate and would take anyone who would take them. But he loves me so much. Okay. Why? Do you know them two days that you spent sleeping? Those should have been two days that you spent cussing him out, sending him hate-filled emails, sending him hate-filled texts, sending him hate-filled smoke signals, sending hate-filled carrier pigeons to drop shits on his head. You should have been blowing his phone up with hate voicemails, everything you could think of to cuss his fucking ass out. This dude is a fucking joke. I mean, just to sit there and just assault you like that, just to per intentionally demean you and hurt you and break you down and, and lower your self-esteem. He's a fucking asshole. So, you know, it's like, well, you think you look cute, but you ain't that cute and you can't fuck anyway and your dick is little. It's just say all kind of ratchet shit to him. But and the main thing is he has a fucked up attitude. Oh, my God. Who says stuff like this to people? These dudes are just a trip. I'm like, see, this is why men get killed. Cause they do shit like this. Did that show snapped? This is this is this is why y'all say crazy shit like this, and a woman loses her mind and kills you, and the next thing you know, you in the trunk of a car on TV. That's how that happens. But yeah, girl, you get your ass up. You don't be laying in the bed crying about this bullshit. You stand up like a G and cuss his fucking ass out. The question I think is, you know, she's trying to figure out how he says he loves her so much, but he talks to her like this. That's her question. But um, he doesn't love you. He just with you because he's, you know, like he's talking about 
<coughs> excuse me, your ex um, just sleep with anything that moves. He's talking about himself. And that's what he's doing. You know, he's telling you that that's how he thinks of you. So what you need to do is get rid of this guy immediately. Don't even talk to him anymore. Just block his number. Don't, I mean, just disappear on his ass. Just go ghost. Because he, that's evidently what he wanted to do. And he found the foulest, funkiest, nastiest way to do it. So if you go back and keep messing with him, then the, the, the game is it's a wrap. He's going to dog you out until you are cream sauce on the floor. So you need to understand what time it is and get away from this fool. Narcissists say things like that, please. Nobody's a bigger narcissist than me. And he would have got told. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. I don't do that. You say anything nasty about me, what I'm trying to do, my friends, my family, my raggedy little Honda, anything about anything that I like or anything about me, your ass is grass. It's like I don't even know you. It's like you, you cease to exist. So that's what you do. And she's talking about he's an athletic, sexy man. Fuck him. Do you know how many men like chubby girls? And they, they, there's this name for it. I mean, it's kind of gross. They call them chubby chasers. But that's a negative uh, term that the guys who don't like, you know, they like skinny girls. That's what they call these kind of guys. But they don't want no skinny girl. They want a woman with meat on her bones. So, honey, you just be fly as you want to be. And, you know, dress, always dress to, you know, appropriately for your body type. Dress in a way that looks feminine and flattering. And, you know, you make sure you're always well-groomed and stuff. You know, got your hair. Because I saw some of the biggest women I've ever seen in my life when I lived in Texas. And, honey, I'm going to tell you what. These sisters was like 22s, 24s, 26s, whoever knows, whatever. Titties like a size triple F or something. I mean, just some big girls, big. And they all had men. All married with husbands that couldn't get enough of them. Okay, just holding on to them and talking about my baby this and tender and loving and all the stuff with these women. And that, you know, being a Californian who was always into eating, you know, bean sprouts and, and celery and, you know, wheatgrass and shit and jogging. That was a wake-up call for me to see that. And uh, so I know it to be true. There are men who love women that got some meat on their bones. They don't want anything skinny. So, you know, he might be that way, but girl, just don't, you know, just move on from him. He's stupid. Question number five. This is a young lady that's 22. She lives in Santa Barbara, California. That's where Elliot Rogers um, <laughs> went for Zerko. I've been with this guy for six months. Notice how I told you how they always emphasize the length of time that they're in a relationship. It never fails. For some reason, that is so important to women. I just don't get it. In the beginning, he was all good. It was all good until tougher times came. I got angry at small matters, and he couldn't take my temper. He initiated a breakup about a, more than a month back, and I promised to change and improve myself. I did for a while until finals came around, and we started quarreling more. Sometimes I think it's because of this exam stress, but at other times I just blame myself for not being understanding enough to be able to give in through his exams. Okay, so then she goes on and on. On the day he initiated, I got crazily upset and started to behave like I was possessed and that I wanted my life to end. I did stupid stuff. It included using his arm to strangle myself in town. He finally realized I was turning blue. I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what to do if I were to lose him. I lost motivation every single thing of my life. All my friends said it's okay for me, okay to me because I gave everything to this relationship and what's done is done. It has been one week since that horrendous day, and I really regret what I did. He kept saying it's impossible between us anymore, but something just feels I should try harder. I'm going weaker and weaker day by day. I eat about one meal every two days until yesterday where my family watched over me 24-7 and made me have to eat. I really don't know what to do now. I just know I cannot give up. It really kills me, and no one knows how much I'm bleeding inside out. Everyone might see it as a six-month relationship, but for me, I have been close to this person since seven years ago, and I talked to him about all my problems, including breakups, which I couldn't take. When no one else was there, I could go to him to talk to him about everything happening in my life. I literally want to take my life more and more each day. Please tell me what I should do. Get your ass up. Immediately call your parents. Go to their house and tell them that to call 
the local mental hospital, and I'm not joking right now, tell them that you have a mental health crisis and that you need help. That's what you need to do. I'm so serious. I know people are probably thinking, oh, she's just laughing. And, you know, she's making, I am serious. I've worked in, in situations where people, um, you know, weren't, they kind of flipped into an alternate reality. And that's what, that's where you are. You are with a college student, a boy. He's a child. And you talking about all this stuff about telling him all your problems. Like he's a shrink. Like he's, that's his, he's supposed to be like your sounding board for all your problems. And you mad because he took away. Don't you think people will get sick of hearing about your problems over and over? What's he supposed to do about him? He's a, he's a kid. What is, what is he supposed to do? That's something that you tell a psychiatrist or a psychologist, a medical doctor, someone who is in a position to do something about it and fix it. Girlfriend, something, you got some problems. This is a six-month relationship with a child, both of your children. Their, your reaction here is over the top way over the top you just doing the most way too much about somebody you only dated for six months and your a level of attachment to him is psychotic okay i'm gonna just use the word you are putting way too much on the burden and responsibility on this kid and then you try to choke your choke yourself out using his arm to do it and you think that he would want to be anywhere even within a 20 foot radius of you he's going to see you he's going to take off running like his ass is carl lewis that's what he's going to do usain bolt somebody he going to go out he just dipping and running the fuck away from you so this is i'm telling you immediately Go call your parents, go to, to their house, have them come get you something. You need to go in for an observation at the mental hospital and get, you probably need some medications, lithium or something to get you back where you need to be because this is just, you. something is wrong. This is seriously something is wrong. And I'm not a psychologist. I'm not, especially even if I was, there's no way I would be able to diagnose you and talk you off of this cliff on the internet it's just outside the scope of what i do here i'm glad you wrote to me and i hope that you're hearing this and i hope that you do what i say but you know you cannot continue like this you're going to hurt yourself so you please don't don't wait do this now those those they can come send somebody to get you 24 hours a day so you they will take you up there and they will put you on observation and you'll be in a safe environment surrounded by medical professionals i think you can pay a parent can stay with you i mean since you're a minor you know so you please do do that well she well she's not sound like she was already with her parents because she said they they were making her watch they were with them yesterday because they were making her they watched over her 24 seven to make sure that she ate. So she already was around her parents, but she, what it is, she's not telling them this. See, that's what I want her to do. So she's already there. It's not a matter of getting their attention because she's there already, but I want her to tell them this so that they can get her some help. See, they're just dealing with the food. They probably don't know about all this other stuff. They feel like she's just, you know, depressed about the breakup and not eating. And so they want her to eat so she can keep her strength up. But they're not looking at what's going on underneath because they won't, They probably don't know about all that. Using his arm to choke her and all that stuff. He wouldn't tell her that. Yeah, she needs some help. She needs some serious help. She's getting weaker with day by day. See, uh-uh. Question number six. Woo, honey. Yeah, I know. Four-year relationship, man. She's a female, 21 to 30 in Albany, New York. So I've been dating. We've been dating for a year and a month. Started dating in October of 2017. We exchanged basic details about each other. So I mentioned my birthday was on December 18th, but he forgot. Oh, so today. So he asked, babe, I know your birthday is in December. Fari, remind me the date I forgot. Okay, being that it was under two months of dating, I let it slide. Maybe he forgot for real. But this year, he asked me the same question today. He still doesn't know it's my birthday. Mind you, we celebrated his in July. Am I overreacting and being petty? No. Um, this is my thing. A lot of people are like, well, you know, I don't remember birthdays. You know, but you can remember sports scores. You can remember some obscure bullshit. You can remember jokes Richard Pryor told in 1978. You can remember all kind of shit like that, but you can't remember your woman's birthday? Fuck you. See, and that's the thing about, you know, women be making up, giving these men, letting these men have excuses. It's like, you know, you can see he can remember all kind of bullshit that he wants to remember. 
you know, shit about Willie Mays and Willie McCovey and all the stuff, you know, who football players and their statistics and how many touchdowns they got and all this old stuff. You know, it's shit, ain't it shit about old cars and what kind of engine they had? And I was like, oh, they can remember all of that. All that. All that. But when they can't remember your one day of the year, one day, your birthday. He can't remember that. See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not falling for that. And a lot of people make excuses you know, and say, well, you know, it's just the birthday, this and that. And, you know, and it's only, you know, it's just happens to be the day that you were born. That's right, motherfucker, it is. And that's the day that the sun rose, angels sang, even the devils put their push forks down and came to gaze upon my wondrous face. Now, that was the day that it was when I came onto this earth. And every motherfucker that I'm fucking better remember that. Yeah, that's just bullshit. They just don't want to do anything. And the, the, the dead giveaway is he remembered his, right? They celebrated his. So he got presents, got taken out, got a wonderful, nice little cake and all this, you know, who, who, who Ron Hubbub made over him. But he can't do the same for his girlfriend. And let me tell you guys something. It used to be, you know, people had like a wall calendar in their kitchen or something, maybe at their desk at work or something. Okay, but now we have... Your phones that have an electronic calendar, you can put the same date on there from now into infinity. And it will stay in that calendar. And you can set it to have a reminder a week ahead of time, a month ahead of time, a day before, you know, whatever. Whatever you want to set. So there's no excuse. There's no excuse for anyone to forget anything about anybody's birthdays and anniversaries and stuff anymore. Those excuses are over. So you got a man telling you he forgot. That's because he doesn't give a shit about you. And don't you dare let that slide. Don't you think, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's a very big deal. When a man cares about you, he cares about everything about you. Everything, especially if he knows that it's important to you. It might not be important to him, but he knows it's important to you. So he's going to do something because it's important to you. And you're important to him. So he wants you to be happy. And he's going to do what? He takes you out to dinner, buys you some fucking flowers and says happy birthday with a card? I mean, how long? How, what is that, two hours out of his life once a year? And he can't do that? See, y'all don't, you don't, you guys don't be thinking about this right. You don't be thinking about this right. I'm just telling you. Yeah. But, you know, I'm like, mm mm. I don't have, you forget my birthday if you want to. It'll be the last day you see me. You need to be like, you know, going to my parents' grave and shit and get down on your knees and thanking them for making me. That's what you need to be doing. That, that would be appropriate. Every year you should do that. You should make that trip to Mecca Cooper. That's what you should do. Please. No, and so anyway, to answer your question in my long-winded fashion, you're not being over, you're not overreacting, you're not being petty, you should break up with him, because he's a motherfucker. You're just wasting your time. And people, I know the guy's going to be like, well, you know, it's not like that I really love her. Then you should remember to put her birthday in your Palm Pilot or your whatever people got in their day, Apple, what the iPhone, and all these other fancy things that people be using. You should put her birthday in there then if you know your memory is bad. But the fact that you didn't do that, you didn't make any effort whatsoever to make this a special day for her, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And I hope that's what she tells you too and then gives you the finger and that's on her way out the door. Question number seven. As you see, I feel very strongly about this. That's right. Get on your knees and bow and shit. This is, this is a wondrous day, I'm trying to tell you. It was like the day, the day of all days. So question number seven. This is a woman in a 36 to 45 age group from Portland. Yeah. It's like he forgot the first time and then he still forgot a whole year later. Fuck that motherfucker. He would be so out of my world. You forget it now. You don't need to remember now. You don't remember there's nothing. Don't even remember my name. Bye. Hey, Deb, could you please explain the following? There's this man in my job who is interested in me. I am freshly divorced, and I told him I wasn't interested in a relationship. He said he respected that. Well, some time passed. We casually talked. It was nice until he told me that he was in a, quote, friends with benefits situation. Nigga lying. That turned me off. I told him he should focus on his relationship and leave me alone. I distanced myself. Since saying that, he's redoubled his efforts to try and woo me. The more I rebuff him, the more lovesick he gets. 
I just feel that FWB situation lacks integrity if the other person, i.e. the woman, involved thinks there's something more. I overhear people talking about his, quote, girlfriend, but he shushes them when I'm in earshot. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I believe you should bump uglies with one person at a time and not double dip. I also like my life to remain drama-free. Why is he so thirsty? Why haven't you shut his shit down? Let's start there. First of all, this is at your job. Okay, now, if he's, but you know trying to woo you and you don't want to be wooed and you've made that quite clear to him, then what you're supposed to do is your next stop is supposed to be in HR. You say, will you please tell this stupid motherfucker that I'm not trying to date him. I have no interest in him. He has a girlfriend. He's disrespecting her and he's disrespecting me by harassing me like this, follow me around, and he keeps trying to get my attention and ask me out and stuff, and I already told him I'm not interested. I want you to take it from here. Because to, to me, this is sexual harassment. It's making me really uncomfortable, and it's creating a hostile work environment. Those are the words you use, to need, you, the term that you need to use, hostile work environment. And so then they'll drag old boy into the office and sit him down and shut him down, and then you won't have this problem no more. But the fact that you keep on dealing with it, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, people like this kind of attention, and that's why you haven't availed yourself of some authorities who can make it stop. So, I mean, I'm glad you wrote me, though, because now you're going to, now I just told you what to do. Now, if you don't do it, that means you like it, in which case, I don't want to hear nothing else about this bullshit. All right, question number eight, female 49 in Atlanta. We dated in high school and reconnected via a mutual friend on Facebook. Oh, I forgot. Let me see what everybody's talking Yes, the dust particles. I don't know. He didn't see him as a meal ticket. He works at the same place. They got, he got a job. He's not a meal ticket. She works there, so does he. So that's not it. Exactly. She's not shutting his ass down. You know, she's avoiding him and doing that passive-aggressive stuff. It's like, you know you can't treat the nignogs like that. Well, actually, she doesn't say that he's a nignog, but his behavior is very nignogerish. So, you know, they're just going to keep doing what they want to do, even when you tell them. So you have to come hard. You have to say, I don't want to go out with you. Leave me alone. Stop talking to me. Stop asking me. Leave me alone. Don't talk to me. And say it loud so everybody else can hear it, too. Then you have witnesses that you told them that. It's like, I'm tired of telling you the same thing over and over. Make sure you use that phrase, too. But, they, you know, they know something about it. You know, they could, the people that he was telling to, sh to shush when you were in with, they know what's up. So, I mean, you know, if you know their names and the HR asked you for that, you could tell them. Yeah, because he tells them to shh when I come by because he doesn't want me to know. He thinks I don't know that he has a girlfriend. But I do know. They want to keep their money and use yours, please. Good luck with that. My little, my little coins is too much. For, too, I'm too interested in my little coins. Okay, question number eight. This woman is in Atlanta, 49 years old. Okay, we dated in high school. We connected via a mutual friend on Facebook. He contacted me, and we immediately clicked like no time had passed. Oh, boy. I hear the violins playing. We have been in an affair for almost a year. He says he stays because of his kids. Of course he does. His daughter is 14. His son is in college. They have been married for 23 years. I'm 49. He's 48. I am madly in love with him, and he tells me how much he loves me and needs me. He says he cannot predict the future, but we could end up together after his daughter is out of the house. Ah. <sighs> You know, it's the same old script. Why don't people know the script by now? I've been hearing this script since I was 10 years old. And I'm my ass as old as dirt. So, you know, you know, we all have seen this play out. So what in the world is it that you think is a truthful statement here? He, he Leading you on, giving you like a carrot on a string and you just biting, biting, biting. I just would like some comfort, I guess. You won't get it here. I have nobody to talk to about this, and it's so hard. We text daily and email at night. I either drive up to see him, he is six hours away, or we fly and join each other on a business trip. We see each other at least once a month. He calls two to three times a week, and we talk for about 30 minutes. He sends me a dozen roses for Valentine's Day and some Sherry's berries. He treats me like the queen when we are together. He is like the perfect boyfriend except for this one small issue. 
I have been super jealous of his wife. I don't know why. He never talks about her, bad about her, and he won't. It's like she doesn't exist. But she does in my mind. It's been the source of our only argument and breakup. Honey, wait. Let's rewind right there. You can't break up with a married man. Okay? You're not together. There's nothing to break up. Let me get that. Let me just reiterate that point for you. You're fucking. You don't have a relationship. Okay? That's. Please understand this, the man is married, so there's nothing for you to break up. Okay, let's, let's, now let's continue. My jealousy that he sleeps in the same bed with another woman every night. That's his wife. That's what he's supposed to do. Even though he tells you they have not had sex in over a year, lies. Basically, right before we got together, I still get so jealous. I am a recovering alcoholic and have been in abusive relationships my whole life. So I get very emotional and jealous at times. I'm twice divorced with two grown children. Any suggestions on how to get past my jealousy over this wife, over his wife? I really do see myself with this man forever, no matter how it has to be. Okay, you know, when they say when people are alcoholics, it destroys brain cells. And so they get like dumb and they get, um, they see things and they hear things and they live in this alternate reality where they perceive things that haven't really happened. That's what's happening with you. That's what's happening with you. You don't see yourself with somebody else's husband forever. Stop it right now. As far as you haven't always been in an abusive relationship, you just entered another one. He's just using you for some tail and feeding you all these, you know, little fancy stories and lines and everything because it makes it convenient. It keeps your legs open. Okay, that's that's all that is. I don't understand why you almost 50 years old and you still don't know that. I mean, what's what's going on with you? He calls you two or three times a week and you see each other once a month and you call us. You just, he just, you just some ask him to tap. And if he goes on business trips and he flies all over the place, he could have a setup just like he has with you with three or four other women. And you don't get it. You think that this is something special. Oh my God, this dude is a piece of work. I feel sorry. Who I feel sorry for is his poor wife. She's up there thinking she got a wonderful husband and he is a piece of shit. See, I tell, I'm tell, telling you, it's like dusty. The dustiness is everywhere. So this woman who's deceived to think her husband is good, she would just get mad if we told her that her husband was dusty. No, he not. My man is good. I got a good man. I got a good black man. But in reality, he's a dust bucket. He's a dust storm. And so, you know, going from state to state, sending women Valentine's presents and all that stuff to get some pussy. I don't know. You know, you be a side chick when you like in your 20s and, you know, they helping you pay your tuition or something, pay your rent and whatnot. But, you know, at 49, what are you doing? Don't you have something else to do with your time? Oh, my God. Remember what I was saying yesterday about, you know, they, the recovering dusty and that you really a dusty <coughs> like an alcoholic your whole life. And she says recovering alcoholic. You're always an alcoholic. You're just always in recovery. Yeah, it's very sad. Oh, Lord. Okay, I see somebody sk skipped question number nine. There's a big blank. So question number nine, there is no number nine. So we'll move on to number 10. Female, 19 to 26, from Long Island. I'd like to start off by saying that I'm a big fan of you and your work. I'm a 20-year-old engineering student from New York. Like most girls my age, I'm quite interested in dating, pursuing a relationship, and eventually sex. <clears throat> I consider myself to be decent looking. I stay in good physical shape. However, I've really had no luck with dating. Most people my age do most of their dating on apps like Tinder and Bumble, both of which I have used. Really? I have never even seen those. Guys my age seem to only want casual sex or friends with benefits situations, and they often have other drawbacks such as drug use, lack of ambition, etc. The only guy that I ever had a serious relationship with lacked ambition and had no long-term goals. Needless to say, it didn't last long. That's because he was palm. He was palm. If you missed that, go see the video from yesterday, the dusty one. Um... I know you're aware of the other issues when it comes to the young men today. Many of them hate women for whatever reason or angry that they can't get laid. My question is, how should I go about dealing with guys in relationships? 
Should I give up on the idea of dating the old-fashioned way and settle for being friends with benefits? No. Should I avoid men altogether and just focus on myself and my career? For now, yes. Should I only pursue sex with men and give up on having any relationships? Don't do that. You expose yourself to disease and drama just to feel like you fit in with the other girls who are silly and, and lost. Any insight would be appreciated. I know many girls my age are experiencing the same dilemma, and you're the only under, older woman I know of that understands the level of dust we're dealing with when it comes to young guys nowadays, thanks in advance. What I'm going to tell you, young ladies, and every one of you listening to this, dealing with young African-American males will put you in a trick bag. Do not do it. Do not waste your time. Go and finish doing what you're trying to do. Then you and your friends, you get together, y'all get your passports, and you travel to some foreign countries and meet some men in like Italy and France and, you know, whatever, other whatever country you want to go to. Uh, so Irish guys are pretty cool. A lot of black and Irish marriages. Um, Scotland. I mean, do something like that. Y'all get out. Put your cute stuff on. Make sure you got your body tight. Put your little shorts and shit on and your little, little high heels and stuff. Get your hair did and go and make the magic happen. Do not even think about wasting your time with the nig nog. Don't even think about it. You're an engineering student. You can get a job with Beckham and they will put your ass in, in Abu Dhabi or somewhere making major bank and you will never even have to think about a nig nog, let alone see another one. So, you know, you... um. You have, you are on the right path. It's good that you asked this question. However, I don't want you doing that friends with benefits thing. There's no benefit for you. That's just for them to get free pussy. That's all that is. And, you know, the, the old-fashioned dating, I mean, if you find that you happen to run into a guy who has enough gall, you know, enough sense and manners to ask you out properly on a date, then yes, go. But most of them don't do that. They just be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to come over, you know, uh, I'm going to pick you up and, you know, yeah, we're going to go back to your spot. You know, man, man, man. They're not trying to spend no money. They're not trying to show you a good time. They're not really trying to get to know you. They're trying to know what's in your drawers. Okay, so don't do that to yourself. Value yourself. This is your one body. Okay, you don't want to fuck it up having some Nick Nog's baby and, ha and just getting stuck with that or getting a whole, bunch, you know, some kind of disease that you can't get rid of, you know, getting all kind of cervical issues because you got chlamydia. I mean, don't do it. Don't do it. Stay as you are. Stay focused. Stay focused. Okay, you got goals. Pursue those. Plenty of time to deal with men after. You know, you're only 20 years old. Please, girl. Mm-mm. I know you are interested in dating and all that stuff. That's normal for, at that age. But there's no, you know, in, in general, um, the guys in your age group are not at your emotional and mental maturity level yet. They're not there. So you'd have to date guys a little older. And I, from what everybody's been saying, shit, they ain't, uh, you know, too much better either. A lot of them seem racist. Well, that hasn't been my experience. So... I'm just going to say go on to uh, overseas and, you know, deal with, with that. I mean, I know too many women that went overseas and they came back with husbands and the nice husbands that adored them. So I can't say that, you know. I'm just saying. And, you know, right in my own family, we got some Irish and we got some French, Filipino Hmm. and Japanese yep and those are people who married you know women um, either they may either they were black and they married a woman of another race or my aunts and cousins and, and, and some college friends married men of other ethnicities and they all seem happy their marriages are still going strong everybody's you know not doing bad so that would be my suggestion Universal, okay, somebody says join a club. The university has a lot of great clubs if you have time to do that. A lot of, they do have clubs, but most of them are filled with women. That's unfortunate. But, you know, if you get into some sports-involved kind of thing, you might might some guys chess, computer stuff, guys being in the B&Os. Question number 11. I have a boyfriend I have been with for three years now. One day he said he's going to marry me. I have some secrets I never told him that I am ashamed of. 
Should I tell him or should I take it to the grave? Not only take it to your grave, but your mama's grave, your great, 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 great grandmother's grave. Shut the fuck up. Don't tell nobody nothing. He don't need to know. What would you tell his ass that for? You in some doubt? Look at that video I have where the man is sitting on the side of the bed and it's like a little air bubble, uh, what they call a little speech bubble, and he's saying he's going to do it like this talking about what the fuck did she tell me that shit for? That's you. You need to watch that video because you talk to too much. Women always want to do this purge of shit. Go to a Catholic church and sit in one of them booths and tell a priest. If you want to, you just have to tell somebody. Do that, okay? But you don't need to tell the man that's going to, you know, this is my thing. People are like, well, you know, that's you're keeping secret. You're telling her to lie. No, I'm not. What I'm saying is this. Every single thing that happened to us in our life put us on different paths, different routes, different different steps we took to arrive at where we are today. So all that stuff that happened behind you, it's not, you don't need to be ashamed of it because it's, it worked to form you, the wonderful person that you are now that he fell in love with. But... That is your past, and that's where it needs to stay. So I'm not saying that you have to be ashamed of it, but I'm saying you have to recognize that there are certain things about us that people never need to know. They don't need to know. He, why are you telling him some stuff that, you know, that you, um, you have secrets that you're ashamed of? I'm going to assume reading between the lines that it is either something of a, a child abuse kind of nature or some criminal activity that your ass did. But either way, it's something he doesn't need to know. So don't worry about it. You, you, you who you are now, that's who he loves is who you are now. That's all that counts. I'm like, you know, I don't know. Because you know, people want to start judging you. I'm looking like every time something happens, every time we do something, okay, there's a fork in the road. You can go left, you can go right, you can go straight ahead. So every time you take one, then there's going to be three more forks from there, right? So all these different routes that you took, you know, somebody else could have taken a different one, and they might end up over there. You took the one that you did, and you ended up over there. Okay, but you're a wonderful person when you got there, right? No matter what happened on the route on the way, you got there in one piece, and you're great now, and that's all you need to worry about. If it's medical... No, that's not what she said. She says, I have some secrets that I am ashamed of. You're not ashamed of medical things. That's a f those are facts. This is not, the implication is not that it's of a medical nature. People aren't ashamed of their medical stuff. Um, yeah, but you know, shit, everybody makes mistakes. Fuck it. Um, question number 12. This is a guy, he's in the 18 to 25 year old age group out of Phoenix, Arizona. Hello Deb, long story short, I was going through my dad's emails to find a particular email to check the warranty date as he told me to do. Somehow I found something I didn't intend to. My dad has been engaging in conversations and he has been meeting with men as far back as 2009. Oh, that's as far as I had the capacity to check. Wait, what year is this? Okay, so that's almost 10 years. He confirmed through some of his emails that he was, in fact, bisexual. Oh, goddamn. Here's our what the fuck letter of the night. It's, it, it showed up. Our family is my dad, mom, and my brothers and two brothers and sisters. My dad and mom are still married. They have been married for 20 plus years. What do I do? I love my mom so much. How do I act from now on going forward? How do I pretend everything is fine? I love my dad too and won't hold him up against his personal interests. But the fact that he has cheated on my mom for so many years, what do I do about that? My dad and mom are both my best friends. We share a very strong bond. But I assume because of societal pressures and religion, he has never opened up about his bisexuality. Okay, first of all, you're assuming a lot. You're assuming a lot. You don't know if that's the reason. You don't know that he hasn't opened up. You don't know that your mother doesn't fully know. And it just doesn't want to feel like you're, it's her responsibility to talk about it with her children because it's really none of your fucking business. So what you should do, though, since it's bothering you so much, is approach your dad and say, Dad, remember the other day when you told me to go and find that warranty the, the email with the warranty information on it and he'll say yes 
and say, well, I accidentally came across some correspondence that, that, you know, that showed that you were, you know, dabbling with guys and you admitted that you were bisexual. Is this true? And, you know, I, I really want to talk to you about it because I'm really trying to understand. You know, because you say you're in the 18 to 25 age group, that means you're an adult. Okay, so you don't need to be crying like a little bitch. You need to approach your dad like a man and say, you know, my concern, dad, is that this, you know, what you're doing could be putting mom's health at risk or her very life. And um, I just want to, you know, we need to have a conversation about this because I love my mother and I don't want nothing to happen to her because of your choices. So, you know, and I love you too, but this is really bothering me. You know, something like that. You want to talk to him calmly. You don't want to start going off and ranting and raving and getting all emotional and throwing shit and crying and just, th- you're just acting stupid. Don't do that. Be very calm. Be very mature and handle the shit like a G. Okay. Cause you represented your si- other siblings, which I'm assuming are younger and, um, you want to find out what's happening. If you know, there's any risk to your mother, if there is. Uh, then, you know, you have to figure out what you guys are going to do. You're going to sit down and make a plan. Is he going to tell her or not? And, um, well, he might feel like they're his best friends, you know, because maybe he doesn't have that kind of tie with anybody. I wouldn't want to say my parents are my best friends either, but there's certain things I wouldn't want to talk about with them. Somebody spit their drink out. (laughs) No, I wouldn't tell my mother. Let me tell you why. In some instances... These women know. They already know. That's why I want him to talk to his dad about it first. Because let me tell you how this goes. You go blabbing to your mother thinking you tattletailing on your dad. And she already knows. Okay, but now you created a very awkward situation. Because now that she knows you know. And you know that she knows. Then it's going to create a weird dynamic where you're looking at her all kind of crazy because you're like, well, why, why would you accept a marriage like that? What's wrong with you? How can you do that? You know, so you start getting into all the stuff. Your little judgmental clock starts ticking. And or she does know and she has opted not to do anything about it because, you know, maybe they're not even having sex anymore. Maybe he just does that. We don't know. But what I'm saying to you is that parents and children's lives are separate. You may feel like they're your best friend friend or whatnot but you're not and they're the ones that are married not you you're the product of the marriage but you're not in the marriage and that's where you need to stay outside of it it's not your damn business what you do though is like I said talk to your dad about it and then whatever he says you let it drop okay because it's not your business it's not your concern but I you know I have a feeling out if they're these parents are that close the wife knows something she knows something. She just don't might not want to talk about it, you know. Oh my God, how long is this letter? Oh, okay. So this is the last one. Ooh, Lord, wait. Let me see what they got going on in the chat room. Yeah, it is. This too much. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm just not a fan of children butting into parents' marriages. I'm just not. I don't care if you walk in and see your daddy dick up in somebody. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. As hard as it's going to be. It's, it's, it's really not. You know, you put your mama in a very awkward position where she's going to feel like to please you, she's going to have to leave him or something. And she might not want to. I mean, there might be a real reason like that she's staying and you don't know what that reason is. Please don't say anything except to your daddy. Yeah, women always know because they act different. And a man who's attracted to men is never going to be that attracted to you. It's going to be a weird kind of inter- interaction that you have. It's not going to be that so. It's going to be very mechanical and uh you know just i mean he's there and he's doing it and everything but it's just not 
is just not in it like a dude is into you. I mean, he just loves how you smell, how you look. You catch him staring at you from across the room, and he's like, shake it, baby, as you walk across the room or something. You know, he's just like into your curves. He just loves everything about you. Can't get enough. Always stroking your face and rubbing your hair. Okay, that sensual attraction, that sexiness, you're not going to get that with a bisexual man because he's looking he's looking like that for about dudes. So, you know, he's just not into women like that. And you want a guy who thinks that just his time with you is like the best thing that has ever happened in his entire life. That's what you want. So this all this accepting bisexual men stuff. But, you know, if they've been married that long and it might be the kind of thing where, you know, she just really doesn't care anymore. Maybe she got a lover on the side, too. Maybe mom is hitting up some coochie. You just never know. You just never know. That's why you stay out of it. Yeah, these dudes are just something else. I'm telling you. I you know, need some. Oh, somebody says, oh, Miss Price, thank you. You from Dallas. I used to go up there sometimes, but I didn't like it too much because that was a dry day. was dry. Couldn't get liquor on Sundays. I guess I hope things are different now. That was a long time ago. That's when I was in college. Oh, in the good old days before, you know, when dinosaurs roamed the earth and whatnot. All right, here's the last letter of the night. You guys ready? Woo, that was something else. These these letters, oof. And this, these aren't as bad as some nights, but oh my. Um, male, 18 to 25. Oops, wait, I the one out. This is female, 45. I'm sorry. I was reading the same letter over. Female, 45. My girlfriend can be insecure and clingy. She has deep wounds and does some work to heal, but is very sensitive. Mood swings, emotional. I am present for the most part, but it drains me. Lots of issues. She deals with working with people pleasing and boundaries, but here's my question to you. We live together, but we share everything. The home is in both of our names, and I pay for half of everything. I'm self-employed, make great money, and I do all the yard work and help keep the house extra clean because she's OCD for real. And I never complained to her about that. I get it. It's how she feels peace. But she can overthink everything and think the yard is in disarray if there are five weeds. I've never had one person over ever. No friends over. I have a grown child. There's not a lot of room for me to feel as if having my child over to visit is acceptable. My girlfriend says it is, but I'm not sure. My daughter just moved here two months ago and she has been to the house once. I'm a female, so I am her mother. Yes, Deb, two women living together. Maybe that's the problem. I'm not, I didn't say anything. <laughs> she must know how I am. Anyway, this morning I had my daughter over to bake Christmas cookies while the girlfriend was at work. I didn't tell my girlfriend about it since she wouldn't be home, and I didn't want her head to go off. Will they make a mess? Will they clean it up? Why is the yard work being done instead of baking? Anyway, she told, later told me that I should have let her know when my grown child is coming over, even if she won't be home. I said, this sounds very controlling. And if she won't be here, why do I need to let her know? Anyway, I'm frustrated and feel controlled, smothered. I get balance and respect. If she's going to be here, I always have a discussion first and a visit. Hardly ever happens, maybe once a month for an hour. Do you have any insight, advice for me? All right. Um... Half the house is yours. You guys are partners. Okay, this is your child. You do not need to let her ass know when your daughter comes to visit her mama. Okay, she should be able to come up in there any time that's reasonable. You know what I mean? Not like 10 o'clock at night. You know, I mean, reasonable time. She should be able to knock on the door and say, hi, mom. I thought, you know, I was in the neighborhood. I thought I would pop in for a few minutes. Just say hi, give you a hug and a kiss. How you doing? You know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the yard's looking nice. Hi, whatever the girlfriend's name is. You know, blah, blah, blah. Sit down for a few minutes, have a cup of coffee, and then be out. That's your child. Now... It doesn't sound like your daughter's disrespectful. It doesn't sound like there's any problem with your daughter's behavior. Your daughter's, you know, you said she just moved there. I mean, so she's moved closer to her mama. Why would she not want to see you? I don't understand where this woman's coming from. And she said, you need to let her know. I think what I, even if she won't be home, I think my question to her been, why is that, you know, why? 
Why do you think that that's how things should go? I would have wanted to know. And so then when she came with her bullshit reason, like, well, you know, because it's my house, this and that, this and that. No, bitch, it's half my house, too. And so you don't get to dictate who I bring to the house. My daughter's not a criminal, and she's nobody's going to hurt you or anything in the house. So what are you talking about? So, you know, nail her ass down. So then finally she's been like, well, you know, I don't want my daughter, your daughter here. But then if you don't want my daughter here, then that means you don't want me here. Because that's the, you know, that's my flesh and blood. And I don't know what else to tell you. Wherever I go, she's welcome to be there too. So this just becomes a matter of, you know, I know she got OCD, but you know, I don't give a fuck what you got. Because that don't have shit to do with me. My daughter is going to be where I am. And anytime you don't like it, you, there's the door. I'll buy you out. And then you could go on about your business and then maybe my daughter move up in here. You know, I, I don't know. I don't have patience for people who are like this. You know, don't tell me stuff like that. Don't be trying to regulate what I do and how I do it. And you are going to have to come down real hard on her very firm and tell her, well, I know that that might be what you think that you want, but just not what you're going to get. And I'm going to have her here when I want to. And whether you're here or not, it's when I want to. And you're just going to deal with it. End of discussion. Then I would walk off. No, she said girlfriend. She said that at, in, a couple of times through the letter. My girlfriend. Okay, so, and she made sure I understood that she was a woman and that they're a couple. Yeah, she's trying to do something, but I mean, you know, it's just a matter of you need to just tell her no. And then start bringing your friends around too. And just enjoy your house where you live with the people that mean something to you besides her, you know. It's just, this is a bit much. And all this, will they clean it up and all this stuff? Of course you're going to clean it up. But it's going to be messy while the party's going on. And she, if she don't like it, she can get in there and clean it up. You know what I mean? It's just, there are certain ways that you just have to handle people. And when you let people start jockeying for position like that and jockeying for control, you have to shut that shit down. You know, it sounds like you've been bending over backwards with because, you know, she knows she has all these problems. But see, for me, oof, these glasses are tight on my ear. I don't care about stuff like that. She would, um, she would just get the rage, and she would just be like, "Nah, I'm not going to. Uh, we're not going to do that. My daughter's going to come over here when I want her to, and that's just the way that it is. I don't know what else to tell you." So that, um, everybody, is what the fuck Tuesday for December, Tuesday, December 18th. Oh my God. These people are special. We had some crazy ones today. Not as bad as that one about the people I told you about the dueling banjos. I'm still tripping about them. That mother sleeping with the son thing. Oh, that was just a bit much. But anybody, um, you know, oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, we got some holidays coming up. Isn't it Christmas and New Year's on, on a Tuesday this year? Um, I might be able to do... No, no, I'm not going to. We're just going to have to switch some days up. But just, keep, you know, make sure you're a subscriber so you get the notification. I have to pick a day, you know, it probably will be the day after versus the day before because that will, it won't make too much sense. But, um, or, you know, maybe we'll just have to skip and then just pick it up on the week after. I have to decide. I'm going to be spending some time with my, with my peoples and you know how they drink and so i probably will be in like no position to do too much of anything but you know just keep that in mind we got these holidays coming up and uh also if you have ideas for uh topics that you would like to see me address or some ideas for guests that you would like me to interview on a certain topic or something please feel free to suggest those just type i'm going to type it in here my email That's where you send your ideas and guest ideas. Do not send advice columns to my email. They will be deleted. If you want to go submit an advice question, you have to go through the advice submission process. There's a link in every show description. There will be one in this one as well. So you just copy that and paste it into your browser. and It will take you right to the advice submission form. It's also at the top of the YouTube channel. It says Get Advice. It's also at the top of the uh, survivingdating.com website. And it says Get Advice there too. Um, but other than that, uh, can't think of anything else. So that means the show is over. 
And that means it'll be time to see you all on uh, Thursday and or Friday. And uh, we'll get started and do some other exciting stuff here on the Depsterism channel. Be sure to share a link. Tell a friend. Help the channel grow. Thanks, you guys. I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.